Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. I want to welcome you to another session of 10 Minutes with an RV Tech. Um, basically, the gist is people ask questions. Uh, we make videos, people ask questions, and we kind of go through those questions and try to pick and choose different ones that, that um, kind of go together, and we kind of compact them together and send them out into a little package we call 10 Minutes with a Tech. So that's the, what's going on here. So if, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe to our channel, like it, and you'll find more of these under our playlist under 10 Minutes with a Tech. And... Um, on our website, we've got other resources for you as well. We've got a, a store, I Make Tools Now, so we're making a, a link for that on our store site, on our website, myrvyworks.com. We have merchandise you can purchase, and we also have links for Amazon, affiliate links that you can buy stuff there as well, things that I've used in the field that people have asked about. So let's go jump over to the shop and see if we can help some folks with some of their questions. Thanks for watching. Our next question is coming from Zilla and it involves a furnace and uh, here's the question um, i have a suburban sf42 furnace so sf suburban furnace 42 is a 40,000 btu furnace so it's a it's a larger size furnace um, hear the click smell the op so those are good indications right there furnace fires up just fine great so we know something about the furnace right there um, it runs for a few seconds great so we know that something else is correct about the furnace and i'll explain what these things are in here in just a second and then it extinguishes. It goes from blowing hot for just a couple seconds, then it blows cold. And then I'm assuming that it basically times itself out. They change a cell switch and they change a limit switch. Same issue. Okay. So what is going on with Zilla's furnace? Why is it doing this? So it has to do with the control board's ability to detect the flame. Okay. So the fact that you hear the click means that the problem is not on the sail switch side, it's not on limit switch side. Okay, so those are two things that you've replaced. You replaced your sail switch, you replaced your limit switch. But if you hear the click, that means that it's passed those tests and the board is like, all clear, fire in the hole, let's go. Okay, we're gonna throw a match into this mass gas mixture and we're gonna create an, an ignition, okay? So if we weren't hearing the click, then at that point, the problem is gonna be on the control side with the sail switch, with the high limit thermostat, with a thermostat, with the wiring on that side, and into my videos, I call that the blue circuit, okay? The fact that we hear the click, the fact that we smell LP, tells us that our LP valve is good, tells us that the blue circuit is fine, okay? So now we have ignition, we have flame, that's good, but it extinguishes. Why would it extinguish? So now we're on the burner side. So to answer this question, unfortunately for the Suburban, you gotta pull the Suburban furnace out, the Atwood Dometic furnaces you can service from the front as long as the manufacturer gave you the little access cover on the outside. But on the Suburban furnaces, you could take those out. Now, if you can have the access cover on the outside, normally there's a little screw, one little screw right in the center on this little foot thing. You could take that screw out and the whole thing slides out. You're gonna have some wires in the way. You gotta disconnect your LP fittings and all this kind of stuff, but the whole carcass will slide out of, the guts will slide out of the, out of the main outer carcass. That stays where all your duct and everything stays. You pull out your furnace, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a link to a video where we go through the furnace and all these different steps. Uh, I have several videos on this topic. The one I'm thinking of right now might be the annual service one. That's a very long one, but you can jump ahead to the part where we talk about taking the burner off. It might be part two. I don't know how we chop that one up. But, but I think, Zilla, your problem is going to be either your burner itself or the electrode that's hanging over the burner. So either the gap is not set, the electrode itself is not set right, or the wire that goes to the control board might be compromised. It also could be your control board. It could very well be your control board. Bottom line, your furnace control board is not detecting the flame and that is why it extinguishes itself. Okay, so we need to go into that part of the furnace where we look at the, um, take off all those screws, take the cover off, right? Look at your burner. A lot of times when those burners fail, it's the bottom side that you can't see unless you pull the burner out that's got the hole in it. Could be that. Pull the burner out. Two screws, couple screws, pull the thing out, look at it. Put the thing back in the videos. I talk about how to set the gap. I'll let the video explain that for us. But bottom line is your control board is not able to detect the flame and that is why it's extinguishing but your furnace sounds like it's in really good shape okay because it is at least clicking it is at least smelling and it is at least igniting 
the board just doesn't see the ignition, so it turns itself off. So, so I hope that helps you, and watch that other video. It goes into great, great detail on the Suburban Furnace. Thanks for watching. Michelle has a question, and it's a real simple one-liner. Water heater stopped working on electric and propane. There it is, okay. So um, that's all the information I have, Michelle. I don't know where you're located, and I don't know what kind of water heater you have. Depending on the type of water heater you have, we might take this troubleshooting one of two different ways. So if you have, I'm going to assume, because it doesn't work on either, well, the first thing you would check, obviously, is the fuse. You would go to the breaker panel and check your fuses and make sure that their fuse is intact. These water heaters, these Suburban and Atwood slash Dometic water heaters, they're basically, um, I want to say dead in the water, electrically speaking, no pun intended, and they get electricity from the switch. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to prove that there's power at the switch. Now, the challenge with checking power at the switch, you could take the switch off the wall. Uh, the challenge with that is you have the, the, the plus side of the circuit there, but a lot of times you don't have the minus side of the circuit. So the trick there is try to find a good ground on that. If you have a meter, you could take the red lead, put your meter on 12 volts DC, and you could take your red meter and take, take the pin on the wire that's feeding the switch. And then a lot of times nearby, you'll find a receptacle, a wall port, you know, AC receptacle. And if you go to the larger round pin, that's ground. Okay, so you take your black lead on your meter and stick it in that larger receptacle, which is ground, and then your red lead, you can touch a switch to try to see if you have 12 volts there. But um, that's a lot of effort. Um, so, but, but that's something you can try. I wanted to offer that. But check your fuse first. If your water heater is not working, my point is that electricity enters that circuit from the switch. So we need to make sure that there's power at the switch. Okay, and if there is, then we can carry on along. Now, I want you to look at this thing right here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so see that little guy right there? That is a thermal fuse. Okay, you find these on Atwood Dometic water heaters. It's very possible that this is blown. Okay, I will make a link for an Amazon affiliate link for this part right here. I think it's five bucks or something like that. You get a pack of three. So if you have an Atwood Dometic water heater, the first thing I want you to do is check to see if this is blown. Now, there's a little brown wire that connects to either side, and, and the, the pins are the same. So you can unplug the brown wire from one side of this thing and just kind of take this out and plug it into where this was plugged in. So if you look again, one side's got the male, it's not focused, but this is the female, and that's the male terminal. So you could just unplug and plug in and take this out of the equation and see if that fixes your water heater. Um, why do they put these in here? Normally they're near where the exhaust is and if an insect or something made a nest in there and fire shot out, this is going to trip really fast. It's going to melt very fast. And this is a circuit on your brown wire where it comes through your switch. It goes through this. This is basically connected to your thermostat. The thermostat that switches on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off all throughout the day whenever you're using it. Uh, the limit on that is 140 degrees, so it's going to turn off at 140, and then I think it's a 115 where it turns back on again. So 140 to 115, 140 to 115, it's just going to do that all the time. And um, so your thermostat could be bad also. That's if it's an Atwood Dometic. Um, so typically when you say your water heater is not working, this is my first thing. But if it's not this, then that's where you're going to take your meter. And... Um, I'll tell you what, I've got a whole bunch of other videos on water heaters. It's pointless for me to waste everybody's time going into detail. So we'll make a link. Just go to the Meyer V Works playlist, uh, the, you know, Meyer V Works channel, and then go over to the playlist and you'll find the water heater playlist. And then I'm pretty sure I've covered a lot of information on water heaters there. So, but I did want to mention this little guy right here. And we'll also make a link up on that as well. So, Michelle, thanks for your question. I hope this helps you. Okay, cheers. Well, folks, that's all the time I have right now to answer some of these questions. We try to keep these things short and compact. But if this was helpful, give us a thumb up. Subscribe to our channel. If you like this kind of a content, you could support us on Patreon. And we also have some links on our website, myrbworks.com, where you can get to our merchandise store, our, our tool store, because we're making tools now, and also some links on Amazon where some affiliate links where I'll, you know, we'll kind of put stuff down there that we use a lot. So it's a pleasure. It's a privilege to answer your questions. I really enjoy doing that as I get time. So thank you so much from all of us on My Works. Thank you for watching. Happy campers. Say My Works.